Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, so last week we spoke uh, a little bit extensively about the kind of inner work that you need to do to align your consciousness and to discover um, if you're being triggered, what you're being triggered by, and how do you unravel, meet the, the challenges that are being created for you. Again, carefully using my words, challenges that are created for your benefit for you, for you to discover, uh, uh, learn and educate yourself about your own emotional intelligence. So, uh, <clears throat> and that in itself is a whole body of work um, and, and in terms of, you know, querying, asking yourself questions, what am I feeling? Where do I feel it? Uh, what, um, what am I blinding myself to? What am I not seeing? All these questions while you, while you wait for your body and your energy to give you answers. <clears throat> because we may be masters of self-deceit, but if you have these questions and you're mostly in your heart space, and this is the part that I want to focus on today, which is how to get into your heart space. If you're mostly in your heart space and you ask these questions, the right answer will come back. And it may not come back in one session. It might be several sessions, particularly when it's something big or something you're trying to really suppress it may take a while <clears throat> for the actual real answer to come to you. You may feel something in the approximation in the general vicinity of, and, but I, I wanna focus today about the heart and mind coherence. The idea of us merging into a heart space and allowing this to become the center of our consciousness. Now, it's a simple exercise enough, but <clears throat> if you are being presented, although I've done this for a long time, and I'm, I think I'm so-called an expert at this, for the past, I'm, 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 I'm return, I've returned back to it, but it took for a period of two months, I couldn't get into that place. No matter how much I tried, I couldn't get, because I was so besieged by challenges by so many things that were, I was praying, I was doing all kinds of things, but I couldn't get into that space. I couldn't feel it. I was going through the motion of surrendering or doing, well, I'm gonna go through it in a second, of doing what I'm supposed to do, but I couldn't get, there's a certain kind of feeling that you get when the coherence occur, when your heart and your mind blend with each other. I couldn't get that feeling. And it took, more than two months of unraveling a whole bunch of stuff, a lot of praying for me to finally get back to it. Because I was so, there were so many crises around me and so many big fears that I couldn't, I, 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 could, I, couldn't, I couldn't connect. And, and, and <clears throat> I want you to understand this, that there are times when you're, the challenges that are being presented to you are so big and so large in your consciousness that you cannot find a way for the, the routine and the way in which you know how to connect to God to be <clears throat> presented to you. And it's, 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 um, it's amazing to me that because I thought I was an expert at this. I do this with my client. I do this when I'm channeling. I do this when I'm, you know, all the time. I do this all the time. I just, it takes me literally like two minutes and I'm, and I'm there. I couldn't get into it because I, I was presented with what I considered to be a once in a lifetime kind of crisis. And it was so big and so large for me that I couldn't, I couldn't drop into that space. And when I returned back to it, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that I was away from this for such a long time. And it felt like it was centuries ago that I had not been there. So the way you connect, and, and, and really that exercise, I'm gonna go over with you, 
is the key to everything. Okay? And I realized that if I was able early on in during the moment of those two months of crisis, if I was able to go into that space earlier, my, the period of time for my crisis would have should be shortened, shorter. So what you do is that you, you take very deep breath, universal breath, you inhale from the core of the earth, and you let the energy move and then exit outside of your head and then you surrender and you let go. Now, when you do this, you surrender and you let go, you're now in, in the emptiness. When you are now in the emptiness, you inhale deeply the benevolence and the kindness of this emptiness and you allow it to come back into you. You do this breath and drop, drop into the core of the earth. You repeat this several times, four, five, six times, whichever the, or 12 times, whichever the case may be for you. And when you feel releases that are happening in your body, <clears throat> then at that point, you imagine that your head, which is where your tactical linear uh, cause and effect brain exists, the frontal lobe, you imagine that all of this is now blended in your upper chest. Literally that your head drop in the middle of your chest. And when you're in that space, you allow the neural net of your heart to sink in with the neural net of your brain. Because your heart is made of a neural net. So you let the neural net of your heart and the neural net of your brain to sink with each other. You keep breathing deeply. And for a moment, you're gonna imagine that the entire focus of your consciousness is in your upper chest. As if uh, your eyes had been relocated in your upper chest. And that you could only see the world, but from that part of your body. And when you go into that space and you sit with it, you begin to perceive in a very different way. You begin to experience the world in a very different way. For one thing, you begin to sense 360 degrees energies all around you. And as you continue to breathe in deeply and slowly, You simply observe and notice what you noticed. Pay attention to any details, any insights, any expansion that may want to show up for you. You keep breathing deeply and slowly. And you're now set with your heart. You're now in coherence where your mind and your heart merge as one. <clears throat> and you're connected to your own morphogenic field. 
And that morphogenic field, yours, is now in sync with the greater morphogenic field that exists in the entire cosmos. You are now aligned to everything that exists. You're now connected to the vast field of infinity times infinity. This is the heart and mind coherence. And this is how you do it. What, it took 10 minutes to do? Maybe a little bit less? Any questions, any comments? Yes, Pierre. When you say sync the neural net of your heart to the neural net of your brain, I'm accustomed to having you say that. Uh, and I imagine such a thing happening, but is there a process to actually do it? The process is to imagine that your head is in that space. Okay. It's literally <laughs> what I just said. Enough to do <clears throat> that's, all, that's all I have said. And you will feel something very different. Yes. You're right. not practically thinking up here. Right. No. The awareness dropped into your, that part of your body. And so the, that's what you meant by the neural net. Can yes. I, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Don't, don't make, don't, 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 you know, don't make it too complicated because it literally is that. It's just a question of dropping. And mm -hmm. the moment the awareness drop into that part of your body, within a few minutes, and you imagine, and for me, the eyes are the mirror of the soul. <clears throat> and if I can imagine for a moment that I have eyes here in the middle, in my upper chest, and then I'm, as, I'm actually seeing the world, not from where, from here, but from there, within seconds, I begin to feel completely different. Mm -hmm. Right. And that difference is coherent. You're now in the morphogenic field. Thank you. I'm glad, glad to have that confirmed. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> and again, once that is, the, this is the most, and, and, I, I, and my code for it during my meditation, let your heart drop in the middle of your chest. That's my code for, go into coherent morphogenic listening. Because what you're doing at that point when, you, when your eyes are there and your, your awareness is in your heart, you're, you're observing and you're, you're listening to everything around you in a completely different way. In Carlos Castaneda, the way he don't want taught him, he called this the second attention. So you're perceiving the world in a completely different way. And if you let yourself sink correctly in that space, suddenly you are no longer trying to survive, but there is a holistic approach to how you're observing the world. Everything is being filtered to this part of your body that is including the collective awareness, not only that belongs, that, that, that is part of your own torsion field, but the torsion field that everything in the universe exists in. You're not connected to everything. It's a beautiful feeling. Yes, 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 yes. And, and again, because I was in such deep crisis for two months, I, I couldn't get in that space. I tried to. I tried to drop my awareness. My awareness could not. I was so in my head because of, uh, I had to calculate how to, how to rescue myself. How, to, how, how am I going to overcome this? I couldn't let go of this. I couldn't get there.
And um, and I and I wanted to go over this because I want you to understand that by by my example, I want you to learn, and I want you to understand that sometimes the crises are so big and so large that they, they so terrify you that the simplest of things, the thing that I, for me, it's like washing my face in the morning or brushing my teeth. This is what I do all the time. When I get up in the morning, after I do my 12 breath, my universal breath, that's the first thing that I do. To key in my day. And the moment, <clears throat> the moment this is done, all of a sudden, everything is unknotted for me. I perceive the world in a completely different way. I don't need to battle. I don't need to, you know, I, I don't need to conquer. I'm seeing the world in a very different way. So for me, that, that's, that's the key exercise because every meditation that I do always starts with the same thing. Let your head drop in the middle of your chest. This is code for me for this particular state of awareness. And when you're in it, the afterglow remains for hours. It remains for hours. And that's what you want. Pierre, yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering how can I tell if I'm a if I actually reach that space, and I know it's hard, but can you potentially describe how you know that you're there or maybe some differences? Well, for one thing, you, okay. The, the, the thing to understand is this. When you're thinking and you're calculating, it's completely linear. It's one foot after the other. You have to do this, I have to do this, and you're in charge, you're in control. When you are in the coherence, you are not in control. It's a state of surrender. Okay? It's a complete surrender, and then you're open to a vast, there's a sense of all kinds of things moving around you but benevolent and kind energies that are coming toward you. And it's a different way of perceiving. You know things, if you're thinking about your job or family member, friends, the world, you, 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 you're thinking about them, but it's a different perception of the world than when you're in, in frontal lobe and you're in your head. That's the best way I can describe it. In one state, when you're here, you're calculating and you're trying to control. In this state, you're in complete surrender. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so that state of being, <clears throat> when you get in it, gives you the ability to access data and information, not only from your own morphogenic field, your own torsion field, but also from the morphogenic field of everything that exists in the universe, because everything is in a morphogenic field. I happen to have around behind me the picture of, this is El Tule in Mexico. This is the tree with the largest trunk in the entire world, okay? You could take a wrap a small village around the trunk of this tree. And uh, 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 it's actually the um, unification, the chakra of unification of the planet where both the male and the female energy merge. And it's the only chakra that I know that's in a tree. Uh, that chakra, that tree, every tree formation, every flower, every natural organism exists in a torsion field. And so when you're in that coherence, you happen to be 
in connection with all torsion field, big or small. If the sun, for example, the, the our planet Earth is in a torsion field. The solar system is in a torsion field. All kinds of things are in a torsion field. So you're in coherence with everything. And what I perceive when I'm there, I don't necessarily know what these energies that are around me when I'm in that surrender, but I know for a fact that there's a lot of benevolence. I, don't, I cannot distinct exactly what they are, but I can feel kindness and benevolence all around me. And if I query, for example, if I'm about to do a query about something that's happening around the world, let's say I have a challenge that's connected to whatever crises of the day that exist. When I pose, when I go in that space first and I ask a question, the truth, will show up for me. Because at that point, there is no lie, there's no deceit. Whereas if I'm up here and I'm trying to control, I will deceive myself, I will lie to myself. Whereas when I'm in that space, there's no lie. <clears throat> when I query, what am I blinding myself to? What am I not seeing? and you wait for an answer to come, that field will come back and demonstrate to you what you're not seeing, what you're blinding yourself to. So it's important for us to deconstruct that process as I'm, we're doing now for you to be able to know that when you're doing your query, if you're in that space first, and again, I do it once a day. Or if I'm if I'm gonna have several clients throughout the day before every client, I resync in. And it takes me a few minutes. Two, three minutes, I just let my head drop in the center of my chest. I and 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 I, I recenter it again and I and I'm there. Okay. It's like I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Ja, um... When you say center of my chest, you mean the upper heart, right? Oh, upper heart, yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. And the moment that happened and you're there, you, you, you're in magic. Because at that point, there's no deceit, there's no lie. And more importantly, you're neutral. You're neutral to everything. The problem with when I was in crisis is that I couldn't be neutral. I was so triggered, I couldn't be neutral. And because I was not neutral, I was not in my heart space. I couldn't find that face. I was praying, I was doing all kinds of things, but I, I was not neutral. So if you can find a way to get to that space, it will make, it will resolve, it will untie the problem, it will unknot it. And you will know exactly what to do. More importantly, because you're in a morphogenic field, if you query about a problem and you're asking for a solution set, the field will respond. Meaning a lot of time, it's not for you to do anything. The field will, Unknot it, and something miraculous in the real world, because my morphogenic field is connected to the morphogenic field of everything. Something in the real world will unknot and come back to me to my benefit to resolve my problem. In the most impossible and the most miraculous way. So this is the reason why you do this. I've been saying, for those of you who've been with me for 12, 10 years, you know I've been saying the same thing over and over again. Drop your head in the middle of your chest. It's code for heart and mind coherence. It's code for morphogenic listening. And it's code for you <clears throat> to be in that state that color, um, Don Juan calls the second attention. 
And when you're in that space <clears throat> and you're in that merger, you are everybody here, but not everyone listens. When you're in that space because you're in such surrender, you are listening most of the time to information that your heart and the entire morphogenic field is trying to give you. This is why I call this the morphogenic listening. You're listening. And for you to listen, you cannot be talking, you cannot be loud, you have to be quiet and you have to be a witness to whatever is happening around you. Um, Carlos Castaner, he had a different way, as far as I can remember, he had a different way to teach them to get to that space. Did, was, did he use a different technique? Yes, he used, he used all kinds of different techniques, but it's the same thing. The same thing. Yes. Yes. So, so uh, uh, all be said is that we, we are... When you're in that space, you're going to be so open and so wide to kindness, to benevolence, and to hope. Kindness, benevolence, and hope. And whatever information comes to you when you're in that surrender is for your benefit. There is no darkness in there. There is no necessity for you to be suspicious and to be, you know, thinking that whatever I'm picking up, to have doubt, to have fear. When you're in that space, only everything that comes to you is for your benefit. So keep yourself in alignment, keep yourself at peace, and let whatever benefit is coming to you show up for you. Any questions, any comments we have so far about this? Now that part of us, which we, why I call the upper heart or the morphogenic listening, in other uh, uh, classes, I've described it as <clears throat> what uh, Don Juan calls it is also the assembly point or the assemblage point. Uh, and we call it, the heart and mind coherence, the upper heart, we call it the morphogenic listening space, coherence, we call it all kinds of other things. It's the same thing. They are seeing it the way uh, the shamans from that lineage sees it. They see it as a ball of light between our upper shoulder blade. We see it as, a, as that awareness that expands our upper chest and that resides in this part of our body. We're seeing it from the front, they're seeing it from the back but it's, in, it's actually inside the body. It's the same location. What they are claiming also, meaning the, the, the shamans, is that 3D consciousness is nothing more than an unconscious agreement that everyone on the planet has made to keep their awareness focused constantly to the same location, the same point, on the assembly, on the assembly point. In fact, in one of his teaching, one of his book, um, John one Carlos Castaner described says that that ball of light has a small dent in it, and that dent is created by the focus, the stationary focus that we keep on three D. However, when we sleep, when we go to bed. 
when we doze off, that focus loosen up, begins to drift and our consciousness begin to shift and focus to other region of this small ball of light. And the moment that happens, we begin to travel, we begin to have dreams, we go to, travel, to parallel world, parallel realities, other dimensions, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm mentioning this because, again, this is the fundamental key to access that space. And when you're there, you can, the, the, and you're in such a state of surrender, you can feel it already. There's all kinds of things that are happening in there. There's a vast, a rich, energetic environment that you step into when you allow yourself to go into that surrender. It's your consciousness dropping into that ball of light that's inside of you in that location. When that occurs, again, there's a vast array of experiences that you could have. And to the degree that you have managed to have presence and you're becoming more and more aware, you get stronger in your awareness in that space, the stronger you're going to become and the more you will be able to travel to other places and other locations. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, so as you were talking, I was doing the query and I find that when I query for my upper chest or I query for the assemblage point, it's a different experience. And maybe it's just a matter of um, obviously more practice to find that common point inside that you're talking about. Um, so does it matter which one we use? I'm using the upper chest because that's what I know. I'm not in that lineage with the assembly point. I'm using it as a point of reference to corroborate information. Okay. So, so, so they're kind of the same, but maybe not different, not exactly the same then. I, I don't know what you're perceiving, Ursula. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell, okay? Mm -hmm. But what I know is that it's the same location. One is being perceived from the front, the other one is being perceived from the behind. It's that part of your body, it's right there, okay? Okay, and then just the uh, second question. So when we do the Bardot exercises for the, um, when we, look at um you know we shift our gaze and um to the back of the head and eventually arrive at the um, amagdala should when we do this should we also arrive that's a that's a little different it's a different exercise it's a different, different it's a completely different exercise okay it's okay just wanted to it's a completely different exercise Okay. And it's yeah, and it's also different from the assembly point that they're using. It, right? It's a completely different exercise. It's a completely different exercise. Okay. The Carlos Castaneda lineage is not do not does not use the the um, the um, the uh, medulla oblongata. They do not use it. This is a Kabbalistic thing, and this is something that the Buddhist, uh, the second Buddha taught. It's not something that's found in any of Carlos Castaneda's book. Okay, I just needed to understand the difference. I mean, I, I know in theory about the difference, but I wanted to understand how it feels more inside. Because, I mean, I suppose there are some things that these things have in common as well, right? As far as maybe, having the experience of being able to choose um, other para reality. There are some similarities there. There are some similarities and the, the shaman's lineage is very different than what I'm teaching. There's some point of commonality, which is they, they are focusing on a point from the front, I'm using it from the behind, but they are, they are, not, they are not the same thing. They are not the same. So I understand. I'm, I'm, I was just curious because we were reading the book. Yes. So I was just wondering, what should I be taking out of that book? Yes. You know, for um, 
Mm -hmm. the book, you're reading the books more for context to kind of understand mm -hmm. and, 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 and more to the point, uh, she's reading The Art of Dreaming by Carlos Castaneda. And more to the point is the, the fact that the, the, the information in there is way more advanced than anything I'm teaching right now, okay? Because mm -hmm. none of you are at, that, are at those advanced stages. Not yeah, no, yes. I mean, I am. Yeah, I understand that they're different, but I was just trying to understand, you know, because we're reading a little bit from this book for the class, and um, now we're talking about this and all these areas. They kind of. I, I guess I'm trying. It helps me to know because we've been doing this exercise for a while. And I haven't been really thinking of how can I validate if I am at, the, at that space and how does it really feel? I have not been focusing on that part, but since you mentioned it, that kind of helps me understand, okay, this is here, this is here, that's how that felt, feels and kind of knowing the difference, I think also helps to build up the awareness, perhaps. Yes. The, the heart and my co coherence, the morphogenic listening, it's a complete surrender. And it's a different kind of awareness where you, it is as if your eyes were in the middle of your chest. And when you're in that state, all of a sudden you feel benevolence. There's a, there's a, there's a rich energetic environment that you find yourself in. It's like you're inside this incredible space where all of these good things are all around you. And you, you begin now to perceive the world in a very different way. That's the best way I can describe it. Okay. It's, it's, it's one of these things you have to know there to go there. That's the best description I can give you. Whereas when you're here, you're trying to control everything. You're tactically thinking, you're trying to manage this, you do this before you do that, and then that before that, and query, and, and it's all frontal lobe. Whereas here, there is no such thing. If you ask the question of the feel energetically, the clear sentient information comes automatically. And it comes with truth, not with doubt, not with deceit, not with, you know, because when you're up here, we lie to ourselves. We, we create, we, we have what we think is breakthroughs. They are not breakthroughs. They're actually seeds of doubts that are being planted in. Whereas when you're here, whatever you get when you're in that space is truth. And it's your truth at the moment. This is not to say that three months from now, something may not be added to it, but it's your, the truth that you're capable of perceiving at that moment. I want to qualify that because truth is not like mathematics. It's not like the equation equals minus five. Truth exists in an infinite spectrum of knowing. And wherever your consciousness is, you will perceive what your consciousness is capable of assimilating at the time as the truth at the moment in time that you're in. But a few months from now, a year from now, 10 centuries from now, that will evolve into something else that will become much richer, much bigger, much larger. I hope this makes sense. Now going back to this place in your, your upper heart, uh, I, I, I want to, that upper heart is literally a command center because in there, 
you can access everything. And what I mean by that is that everything that exists in the entire universe, because every location in that energy center, that bubble, every direction, every location, with the right intention directed at it will cause an effect into the into the real world because let's say for example you're, you you have an issue related uh, i don't know to something that you're facing okay and whatever it is that you're facing as you focus your awareness in this and you you release an intention in that morphogenic field in that direction and you want to have an answer come to you, or you're praying for somebody's healing, you're trying to help someone achieve certain things or yourself achieve certain things. When you focus on this and you go into that space and you release the intention in that space, if you're truly in the morphogenic awareness, when you release it, suddenly it creates a ripple in your own morphogenic field because your own morphogenic field is connected to the entire multiverse, not just this universe, but the multiverse. I've said this before. Bear with me for a second. I explained this once before. The idea of three different types of space. So let's say the universe is a morphogenic field. Let's say this mind trying to create a, a, a bubble is the universe. If I'm at the top here and I want to travel to the bottom, normal space, I would have to travel all the way around to get to here. And the way we connect the normal space is that we. We travel at the speed of light, which is the fastest that you can travel in space-time continuum. However, in subspace, the laws operate. This is the, the first instance is the Einstein theory of relativity. The other space that I'm talking about is subspace is where if I want to go from here to there, if I create, if I somehow distort the membrane of time and space, because time space in our universe, uh, I'm going to explain it in a, in a very simple way. If you have a trampoline and the trampoline is a membrane and you, you can bounce things on top of it, you can bounce a marble, a marble barely creates a dent. But if you take a bowling ball and you put it in the center, the bowling ball will create a huge net because it has a lot of mass. And if you were to put marbles next to the bowling ball, there is videos of actually scientists doing this. The marble begin to rotate around in the orbit of the giant ball until the orbit brings them to the very next to it. This is what happened with planets that are rotating around a sun or around a, a, a black hole. So, except that in, in, actual, in actuality, time and space is not a flat sheet. It's not a trampoline. It is actually a volume. It's like, us, like if, if, if you were swimming in water, it exists everywhere. So when, when your mass increase, the dent that you create in the fabric is all around in every direction because it's a volume. Now, traveling from the top of the universe to the bottom, to subspace, you increase or you, you create a perforation through the, to the trampoline. In other words, you somehow create such anomaly that you break the top of the trampoline. For example, you put an object that's so heavy, like a safe, 
to the trampoline, the trampoline punctures. You create an opening and it punctures. And when it punctures, it goes through and it creates an opening that travels directly to the bottom, shortening the time and the distance of travel. In scientific terms, what you do is that you create a warp drive. Scientists have uh, modeled it out, but they have, and they have created mat the map for it. They haven't physically created it. Because in order for you to create it, you have to find these exotic subatomic particle, particularly dark matter, okay? And a lot of it for you to be able to, to bend space around you. In fact, the object doesn't really move. You just bend the space around you and then you, you push the space behind you. And, and, and when that happens, you travel to subspace. The final stage or different calculus, it's the quantum uh, field and quantum mechanic, which is saying something very different. That's really sub-level at the very beginning of the universe object, the laws of physics were not established. The law of relativity, subspace were not even established. And things operated in pure consciousness state, meaning that my thought, like the double slit experiment, famous double slit experiment that was done, where scientists begin to bombard a photographic membrane with two slits in them uh, with a proton a proton gun. Proton is a particle, it's the, 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 the smallest particle, and they begin to watch the, the geometry that he was created. And then they went to lunch or they went outside the lab and they left the gun on, the gun bombarded, and when they came back, the pattern showed a wave, which is not a, a, a particle. So they were confused. Then they did the experiment, we did it, Thousands, of, I often say thousands, but multiple times under multiple conditions. What they discovered is that if the scientists wanted to see a wave in their consciousness, they would see a wave on the photographic membrane. Whereas if they wanted to see a particle, they would see a particle. So what they realized is that the observer is influencing the outcome. In other words, when we exist, you know, when we are in that morphogenic listening space, we are influencing the world by the expectation that we have. This is why I had said to you that if for the two months that I was in this crisis, I did, I had got, I was able to manage to get myself into the morphogenic space, my crisis would have shortened because I was expect because I was spinning, I couldn't get there. I was in fear and in crisis for, for two months. Because I was in a crisis for two months, I was expecting things not to be resolved. They didn't get resolved. The observer is creating reality by the expectation that we have. So when you have big things that are happening in the world that are triggering you into fear, whether it's climate change, whether it is potential for nuclear war, whether it, if enough of us believe that there's gonna be a nuclear war, there will be a nuclear war. On the other hand, if enough of us believe the opposite, nothing will happen. The observer is creating reality, is affecting the reality that we exist in. And it's all connected to that location. That if you can get into that space where you're in that surrender and you're so open and you're listening to the field and you bring whatever issue, let's say for now, fear of nuclear war, how do I, or how do we combat this? And what can, can we, or you bring in world peace and you sit in that space and you try to be in a space where you can, you can generate, let the peace that I know in my heart pass on to everyone on the planet. 
And if you and all of us do this, it will influence world events. Because we, the observer, are desiring or intending or are decreeing a different outcome. The other way for me to, uh, this is quantum physics. Quantum physics says, for example, if I hold this cup in my hand, that cup exists everywhere in the universe simultaneously. I'm gonna say this completely differently and listen carefully to what I'm saying. It is not that the cup or anything else exists everywhere simultaneously. It's the exact reverse. I'm gonna take, turn it upside down. Everything that exists in the universe, every possibilities, every solution set, everything that exists or that potentially could exist, exists in me right here. Everything. The good, the bad, the indifferent. Everything exists within me. So if I'm struggling with something, let's say I'm struggling with victim mentality, the opposite exists in here. What's blocking me from accessing it, it's my attachment to the victim mentality. If I'm in pain and suffering and I'm grieving, I'm, I'm, or I'm in, I'm, my health is poor and I, I have all these problems, that's health problem, the opposite exists in me because everything that exists in the entire universe is in me. What I'm saying to you is that you are godlike. You're a co-creator with God. The Bible said, he are God, but know it not. What's blocking you, it's the conversation that you're having in your head, the negative feedback loop conversation that you're having in your head that's saying, it's impossible. I cannot possibly do this. This is too big. It's too heavy for me. I cannot, I can possibly, I'm too much of a victim. I can't possibly do this. This is too much. I need help. Whereas in you, as the observer, exists the opposite. All you have to do is decree it and will it. And it will show up for you. And that's what you will experience. Because natural law work all the time. If scientists were able to observe this and realize and they conclude, this is scientists we're talking about. Molecular and atomic scientists, they observe and they realize that it's the observer. The only thing that changed is my expectation. When I expect to see particle, I see particle. When I expect to see wave, I see wave. So I am influencing what, what reality I observe. Now, the mystics, the enlightened one, the teachers, the great saints, I've been saying this for centuries. Whatever struggle that you have in your life right now, the opposite is in you. What's blocking you, it's your attachment to the condition that you're in. There is a part of you that's marinating and that's putting paprika, <clears throat> putting condiments in, that's comfortable in, in the suffering that you're in. And that wants to prolong it for whatever sadistic reason that's that you may have. There's a part of you that's holding it back that does not want to let it go. Either because there are the people that you are engaged with, you want to prove them wrong. You want to make sure that everybody sees you as being right. You want to, you know, 
because we, 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 there's a desire sometimes in us, particularly when there's a coming dynamic, that we want everybody to see that we're, wrong, we're right and they're wrong. But the universe says it's, it's all of that conversation is not relevant. You want the condition to be gone, decrease something else while you release and let go of all your attachment, including your attachment to outcome. And the moment that happened, the situation will unravel. Yes, okay, if I interrupt with a question. Yes, please, please. I'm trying to coordinate two thoughts. One that when you're in that heart space and you are then connected to the universe, to God, you are everything in you, all possibilities. If we are all one, you and I and the rest of the world are one, and all of the universe and God is in each one of us, can we not then impact one another in the same way that we could impact our own reality? Or is that an invasion? It's not an invasion. This is the way, as I was saying before, if you want to create world peace, if enough of us desire peace and bring peace from that space, peace will be created. The best way I can describe it, if you have a flock of starling, sometimes they come in four or five million together and they start flying and all of them begin to fly in the air and they are murmuration and they begin to create this incredible pattern. They, they are also surrendered to their heart and to the higher consciousness of this morphogenic field that's creating the geometry for them that none of them hit each other, none of them fall. The morphogenic field takes care of all of them. Perfectly, seamlessly, like magic. This, when you're witnessing a flock of sterling, and sometimes the tuners do this when they're in the sea, you're observing now total surrender. Mm. The problem is that we have attachment. We want things in a certain way. What color, in what shape, you know, I, I don't want it from him. I don't want it from her. I don't want, you know, whereas there is no such thing when they are flying. Thank you. One final question. Yeah. Okay, um, let me see if I can verbalize this correctly. You're in your heart space in that blissful uh, coherence with the universe. You have resisted or put aside any resistance and you are able to create a reality that, that you want or that, that's positive to you. Um, does it disappear the moment that you slip off the wagon, so to speak, and find yourself troubled with those thoughts again, those doubts. Does, does this toggle back and forth or does it, once you've created it, does it stick? Okay, it depends the degree of presence that you have. Mm -hmm. How much prana, how much energy that you, you, have, you have cultivated mm -hmm. in your body. Okay, how strong is your cultivation? I use the example a lot of what happened between me and Celidia when she was in Atlanta for three days trying to get a flight from Atlanta into New York uh, after uh, Memorial Day. She couldn't get a flight. On the third day, she called me. She said, I've been, here. I've been going back to my friend's house two nights in a row now. This is the third day. Now I'm number 48 on the standby list. 
can you pray for me? Can you do something for me? To, and I said to her, have you learned the Torah? She said, no. And I, I went, because I was already in that space. I was already in that coherence. I told you, when you're in that space once, he, the afterglow remained for hours. I was already in that space. And it was very easy for me. I, I'm, I, she's on the phone. I'm holding the phone. I said to her, hold on. We're on the cell phone. I said, hold on. I said, be, uh, I'm going to do a torsion field for you. As I did the torsion field, the intention was bring Celidia to New York now. And I released it. And I asked the guardian to come in, first torsion field around her for this intention to be created. Second, the, when we got to maybe torsion field seven or eight, she said to me, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, they, 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 she, she's saying something. They, they want us to get in the plane. I, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. She hung up the phone. Hmm. Then she, she called me back 10 minutes later. She said, Pierre, I'm in my seat. Not only did I get in my seat, but everyone that was in standby is in the plane. Hmm. I remember. Okay. So what I'm saying to you, when you have cultivated enough presence, There is a wave function collapse that allow, meaning by that you, you put so, your certainty is so strong that you, you now, this, the way I was describing the ball, and then you, instead of having a bowling ball, you put a safe, you drop a safe in the membrane and it punctures through, that's what you do. But you need presence and you need enough uh, strong cultivation in this practice to be able to do it. Right, so if, if that oh, time and effect didn't happen immediately, but you let's say- back. You have to go back and do it again. So let's say uh, she was to travel the next day and you did the torsion field and put the intention forward for her and, and it was all functioning on day one, but on day two, something else happened because you or she allowed some resistant thought to come in, some doubt, some fear, who knows? Will that have changed on day two? I mean, fortunately for her, it didn't on that day one because it was immediate. I, I, I don't know what would have happened, okay? Um, um, because I was in such certainty and I knew then and there, my connection to spirit at the time was super, okay? But, but I'm gonna tell you something else. If I was truly like one of the ascended master at that point, when I created that intention for her, she would have in an instant, in a snap, find herself in front of her door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm, I love that. And, and Janice, I, I, when I told Celidia this, she said, oh, if you had done this, I would have dropped dead. <laughs> <laughs> I would have fainted right in front of my house. <laughs> and maybe that could have happened. And maybe she was the one that wanted it to happen in a way that would not cause her to have cardiac arrest. Oh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So she found her skin. She, it, it happened in a way that was acceptable to her. Right. Someone so, else that's open to the possibilities, they, they would have instantaneously found themselves in front of their door. I love that. The reason that I asked is that um, maybe I'm not alone. Some days I'm strong and, you know, the, the connection is, is cooking along good. Yes. And then maybe something happens the next day and something brought, brings back all kinds of different negative thoughts and emotions. And I'm wondering, did I just destroy what I built on day one? Uh, I, I wouldn't say you destroyed it. I, I, I wouldn't say you destroyed it. I think one of the things I tell clients and students all the time, there is something akin to that. For example, particularly when you're querying, and you get an answer, or you pray to a spiritual being, 
and you ask for help and you feel that the help was provided. Okay? So what happened? Two hours later, you go back again and you ask them again. Hmm. The moment you do this, you are undoing because what needs to operate with this, the way the law operates, why the safe drops in and the mass change and everything's structured through and there's a wave function collapse, it's because of your certainty. When you release the intention, you have to know through and through in every part of your being that it is done. Right now, it is not tomorrow, it's done. And the moment that happened, touchdown. It's created. When you keep going back, when you're doing prayers and you keep asking and you keep asking over again, over again, and every two hours you, you go back and query again and ask the same question over and over again, what you're saying is that the first time, although you, I was, sometimes, and I'm going to tell you something, honestly, sometimes this happens to me too. Like I go back and I, I start redoing the same thing. I mean, thank God for my guides. I keep hearing from my guide. It's already done. Stop it. It's already done. And I have to stop. Like I'm praying for somebody. I do the prayer once. And then, you know, two hours later, I go back. I try to do it. They're like, stop, stop. It's done. Now, maybe I could just say that it's not on day two, let's call it, that that I would be praying or trying to reach that coherence for a particular outcome. Again, it's just that the doubts come back. I know, and they, right now, go, you and I see I draw you. Right now, <laughs> this, is, this is what happened to me for those two months, the doubts. Yeah. You're beginning to second guess every, every move that you make. Right. Did I do this right? Was, was this wrong? Was this, you know, a few hours later, some, some whisper, some stream of consciousness thing comes in telling you, you did it wrong. You, you, you were not good enough. You should redo this. That, that protocol was not done correctly. Do this. And, and, and it drives you bananas. Mm. And the problem for me, when that happens, I am here. I'm mm. full alone. Mm. I'm linear. Because when I am in my heart space, my heart knows better. It knows the truth. Well, there's the answer. It just stay in your heart space where no doubts and fears can enter. That's it. it because my heart knows better. But I'm saying to you, I'm acknowledging the challenge at this moment because there are so many big things that are happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. When you hear... For example, that North and South Korea are having a nuclear escalation. When you think, you know, what's happening between Russia and Ukraine and, and ballistic missiles or this, when you, when you hear this drought on your supply chain, you go to the supermarket, everything is three to four dollars higher. When, when, you're listening, when you're seeing all of this, of course you begin to be afraid. It, whatever, it, it will jolt you out of your heart coherence. But what I'm saying to you, resist. Mm -hmm. Resist, go back into the heart space. I'm, I'm telling you this and I'm telling myself this again. Resist. Because when I'm in that space, all kind of abundant thing happens to me in the most miraculous and impossible ways. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about health. I'm talking about opportunities. I'm talking about kindness. I'm talking all kind of miraculous thing begins to happen to me. Mm -hmm. Synchronicities. Coming. Yes, it's that whole saying that says jump and the net will appear. I jump. It's not the net that I needed. I grew wings and I flew. <laughs> I love that. Who knew? So, so this is this is what I'm talking about. Is that it, it? 
and, and I'm acknowledging the challenge. Because like I, I have I have clients that are in California, and when there are fires and they have to flee their home, they have to pick up their belonging and their family, their dog, and, and they have to run. And this is we're talking about crisis. This is frontal lobe. This has to react. There's no time for you to go in heart and mind coherence. Mm -hmm. So I'm acknowledging. And, and I have to be honest with you, and I'm, I'm going to go even further. These world events that are so big and so loud that are causing, uh, for example, right now, the division in, in um, elections are still being decided. The division and the, the, the way the, 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 our, our, our country is being ripped apart, that in itself can cause somebody to go ballistic. So you have all of these things, and I'm going to say something else to you. If through all of these things, through all of these challenges, you're managing to still be made in your heart space, you win. Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what these things are. They are challenges to test you and see if you're still going to go to that still place within you. And if you can still do it, then you will go to a deeper connection, a more profound level of connection in that heart coherence. And that will actually give you the opportunity to master yourself in an even deeper level. Just imagine what we could do. We might on a collective level decide that we are not going to agree on the 3D forgetfulness of who we are. And, and, and this is what's supposed to happen at the time of the galactic equator crossing. Mm. All of us on the 144,000 will, will be the, this is why we're, we, we are the actual gates. We're gonna create the opening for them, for the rest of the world to move, for those who are willing to move in that space. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, this is what this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna all agree that safe passage into that world and that new and the new earth. Thank you, Pia. It's very beautiful. It, 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 Janice, I'm acknowledging this because I, I'm I'm being completely candid and honest with you. There are days what you're saying exactly, this is what's happening to me doubts. And when I'm in that doubt, it's because it's here. I go back. I, I, the, the, the thing that are happening in the world, or the crisis, the, the triggers are so big that all of a sudden I'm, I'm now here. Mm -hmm. I, I shifted from my heart into here. And because I'm here, I can't see the forest from the tree. And, mm -hmm. and the doubts and the, you know, back and forth. Whereas when, I'm, when I remain in that heart space, there is no problem. It's magic flow, flow everywhere. Flow till we fly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Pierre. You're welcome, you're welcome. Anyone else? Any questions, any comments? All right, let's take a five minute break. And then on the back end, we'll do our closing meditation. Thank you. I'll give you a call after class, Pierre, okay? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
take a very deep and slow breath. And as you inhale and exhale deeply and slowly. Allow the universal life force that permeates everything to enter into our lives. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. And let your soul and your awareness drop in the middle of your chest. Please forgive me. I love you. And I let go. Please forgive me. I love you. And I let go. Let your mind and your heart sync with each other. Let your entire self-awareness shift into your upper heart. And since the heart, the eyes are the mirrors of the soul, begin to now perceive and see the world. from your upper, upper heart. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. And notice what you noticed. Become aware of any insights
expansions and knowing. This is creating void. Listen as if the more than 50 trillion cells that exist in your body had ears. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. As you allow now the morphogenic field to take over your entire consciousness. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. and become aware of the vast and endless field of extended blessings benevolence and kindness that's moving all around you and grounding into every cells of your body. Keep breathing deeply and slowly.
and surrender into this blessed field. All of the greatest challenge that you are facing at this time. Let no parts of what you think you need to do your attachments to having to do in order for you to have become an obstacle for you. Unburden yourself completely. Let go of every aspect, every individual, every connection, every resources that are connected to this challenge. Give it into this blessed field. Let go. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. Now I decree that today, right now, the invert frequency, vibration, and manifestation to exist in my life. Thank you. 
Every part of that challenge is an illusion. It's a test. I recognize this as a mirage. And I let go of my attachment to all parts of this illusion. As a co-creator with God, I let go of my bondage and shackles that are keeping me prisoner to this narrative. I claim my spiritual freedom and liberation. I am free at last, free at last, free at last. Bye. 
Thank you for the blessings. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Thank you for the blessings. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Thank you for the blessings. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Take a very deep and slow breath. And whenever you feel ready, you can open your eyes.
Pierre, I don't have words. I don't have adjectives superlative enough to describe what a stunning meditation that was. Oh. Very poignant, right on, spot. Very, very helpful. Thank you. Wow, you're welcome, John. Wonderful. You're welcome. Beautiful. Any other comments, questions before we close? I want to thank all of you who are listening to us on Patreon for supporting us. I want to, uh, if you're listening to us on YouTube, like this video, subscribe and share. I would appreciate that uh, part of you um, if you feel so aligned to share this with your friends so that we can increase the algorithm. I truly and deeply and sincerely thank you for joining us. Namaste, and I'll talk to you next week. Blessings to everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Love you. Love you more, Janice. Good night. Good night.